Hello and welcome to Baichu's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion, what is G7? Let us try and understand what is this topic all about. The G7 happens to be an informal forum of leading industrialized nations which include Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, United Kingdom and the United States of America where these countries meet on an annual basis to discuss some of the issues daunting the global community. It can be with respect to the global economic governance, it can be with respect to the international security, it can also be with respect to the energy policy that is hurting the global community. Together, these member countries represent about 40% of the global GDP and 10% of the world population. When we look into the G7, initially, when it was formed, it was not the G7, it was G6 countries. This included countries like United States, France, Italy, Japan, United Kingdom and West Germany which formed the grouping of six in the year 1975. Now the question is why did these countries come together and why did they form the G6 countries? That is because at that particular time at around 1975, the global economy was facing a lot of recession. This was due to organization of petroleum exporting countries imposing a oil embargo. Because there was energy crisis, major economies had to come together so that they would be able to bring an end to the recession and the economic issues that were surfacing back during the 1975. It was created to provide a venue for the non-communist powers to address pressing economic concerns which included inflation, recession sparked by the organization of petroleum exporting countries. So because there was recession, because there were economic issues, because it was hurting all these countries, six countries came together, they initially formed what is called as the G6 countries and over a period of time, this G6 goes on to become G7 with the inclusion of Canada. In 1975, they did not have Canada as part of this organizational forum, but in 1976, they added Canada to this particular grouping and every year, they started having annual summits as well and it eventually went on to become what is called as the G7. Initially it was G6, it goes on to become G7. Then we have another grouping called as the G8 which came into picture back in the year 1998. In 1998 what we had was Russia was also added into this particular grouping. It was part of the G8 until the year 2014. But what happens in 2014? Russia invades Ukraine and it also occupies Crimea as well and it takes over Crimea as well and as a result Russia was suspended because it started annexing Ukraine's Crimea region. So up until 2014 from 1998, this grouping was also called as the G8 grouping but eventually in 2014, Russia was suspended and it goes back to its original position called as the G7. Now the question is, does it have a secretariat? How does the meeting take place? When we speak about United Nations, what it has is a charter. When we speak about NATO, what it has is a charter and a secretariat as well. So when we have these officers established, what you would have is people coming up to the secretariat, discussing what are the issues, so on and so forth. But when it comes to the G7, they do not have a formal institution like a charter or a secretariat. When we speak about the G7, the presidency rotates annually among the member states, which is responsible for setting the agenda of each year's summit and arranging logistics for it. So basically, the country that takes over the presidency is responsible for organizing and hosting the meeting. So all the ministers and envoys who are generally called as the SEPAs, they come out, they come up with the policy initiatives, they take all these initiatives together, they discuss and the national leaders ultimately sort out what are the issues that they have to discuss. At the end of the meeting, the G7 releases what is called as a communication. This will be a document which will clearly outline what has been agreed upon in this meeting. In the present situation, who is hosting the presidency? It is Germany. So Germany holds the presidency for the year 2022 and this is hosting the G7 summit for this year and it is currently taking place in the Bavarian Alps as well. So remember, this can also be important from the preliminary examination point of view. So the Germany is holding the presidency and as 
as a result it has invited leaders from argentina india indonesia south africa to take part in several working sessions during this summit what happens when it comes to the agenda what is the agenda of the g7 generally when you speak about the g7 meetings they discuss about common shared values as well as the concerns for example in 1975 all these countries came together they started discussing about the economic crisis inflation recession that was existing during the 1975 and all these countries are also democracies as well they also have similar value system as well in case there are issues that is hurting all these countries they discuss as part of the agenda so initially it focused only on economic related issues but eventually it was extended to foreign policy security so on and so forth after it the global community started seeing multiple other challenges as well so these countries also started discussing about climate change education human rights health so on and so forth for the year 2022 the agenda for this year where germany has taken the presidency is more about russia's invasion of ukraine it is also about economic crisis that was created because of this war vaccine equity as well as the climate emergency so the agenda basically means what they would want to discuss what is the outcome that these countries want to discuss upon will be discussed as part of the agenda and after the meeting gets over they release a document called as the communique which will clearly outline what was the end point of this meeting and when we speak about g7 does it have any power when we speak about g7 as of now when you look at it it does not make a law when we speak about the united nations it has a charter but when we speak about g7 it does not pass any laws because it is made of separate nations with their own democratic processes however there are some humanitarian in groups as well they keenly watch what is happening with the G7 summit because all the efforts that these humanitarian groups take place will also be aided by the G7 if you look into the past achievements of the G7 in the 1997 the G7 countries agreed to provide 300 million dollar to the effort to contain the efforts of the reactor meltdown in chernobyl so they have let their hands to the disaster mitigation impacts as well at the 2002 summit members decided to launch a coordinated response to fight the threat of aids tuberculosis and malaria their efforts led to the formation of global fund and innovative financing mechanism that has dispersed more than 45 billion in aid and according to its website it has also saved lives of over 38 million people more recently the global apollo program was launched out of the 2015 g7 summit meeting designed to tackle the climate change through the clean energy research and development the apollo program was conceived by the uk but failed to generate traction until the other g7 countries agreed to support it eventually the program calls for developed nations to commit to spending about 0.02% of their gdp on tackling climate change from 2015 15 to 2025 an amount that would total usd 150 billion over a 10 year period these are some of the achievements that we have witnessed in the past with respect to the g7 however there have been some concerns and challenges with respect to the operation of the g7 there have been differences there have been contradictions and the grouping has remained a challenge for the past few years as well what are these concerns several countries and individuals still perceive the g7 as an exclusive closed group richest few that blatantly exercise power over the other nations how many countries do we have we have just seven countries these seven countries decide the destiny of all the countries in the entire world there are humanitarian groups which rely on the contributions made by these countries and these countries take some of the policy initiatives which ultimately hurt the sentiments of thousands of people millions of people as well as many countries so the first major issue is that if you are taking any of the policy initiatives this should have major countries at least but in this particular case you have only seven countries these seven countries is going to decide the destiny of the humanitarian groups as well as other countries so the first major concern is that these countries have not represented the value system of multiple other countries and taking the decision only on the basis of their own value system ultimately hurts some other country when we speak about europe we have italy we also have germany as well but we do not have the european union which is more representative ideally european union should have been represented yes 
informally European Union is called to this particular summit it is part of the negotiation as well but actually speaking it is not part of the G7 they are invited they do speak as well but officially it is not part of the G7 so it has no binding impact on the policy and all decisions and commitments made at the G7 meetings and in fact these people are not even asked what should be the way forward when it comes to the policy initiatives as well as a result instead of countries like Italy Germany the better representative of the Europe should be EU and EU is not present which is another major problem there is excessively vague wording of the communique as we initially discussed at the end of the summit they release something called as the communique which will be an official document released by all these countries which will give the policy initiatives and the policy outcomes that they wish to implement however what is happening with this communique is certain words are vague they are not defined properly as a result the interpretation itself takes a long period of time there is confusion over the statements that are made and even some statements that are made are of no relevance to the world affairs so this particular document is yet not clear is another major criticism allotted time for this particular summit is less they do not discuss deliberate for a longer period of time if we speak about the united nations you have the people who actually discuss and deliberate about these issues but the summit takes place for one or two days and within a short period of time these people go about discussing those matters which could have large scale repercussions to number of countries so they have been allotted less time but the impact that they create for multiple other countries is far greater is the next major concern exclusion of two of the world's largest economies in india and china in g7 you have countries like italy Italy and its economy is not doing good but countries whose economy whose population represent the global market is not being represented is the concern then we have what is called as the plaza accord the plaza accord was an agreement that was signed back in the year 1985 where g5 nations like france germany united states of america united kingdom and japan tried to manipulate the exchange rate by depreciating the us dollar so the minute this was created what happened the agreement had major ramifications for the global currency market and this led to backlash from the global communities as well then there are internal disagreements as well what is this internal disagreement we know for the fact that united states of america has issues with russia as well as china but other member countries do not have issues with china but they only want to isolate russia so there is internal disagreement with how to appease certain countries and how to keep certain countries isolated and this is leading to the clashes between the countries who are part of the G7 and as a result what we have is an internal conflict internal disagreement between the countries who are part of the G7 as a result there are few experts who go on to say that this G7 will have to be expanded we have to include australia india as well as south korea and we should name it as d10 because these are the democracies and they do play an important and significant role when it comes to the world affairs so this entire premise of g7 has to change with changing times and it has to be inclusive going forward is what we have to understand with respect to this topic so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best